We are tracking Hurricane Ian as it continues to churn ever so closer to the Gulf Coast of Florida and tonight will make impact with Cuba. And these are the latest forecast models for the projected path of the storm. Your weather authority will break them down for you. And here's a live look at the size of Hurricane Ian. It is massive as of the 5 p.m. advisory. This is coming in right now from the National Hurricane Center, all of Florida under a state of emergency as we wait to see which way Ian will go. Hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Lowry and Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis are here with your tropical update. Betty, let's start with you. With this new advisory, we're finding that Hurricane Ian is stronger, getting closer to becoming a major hurricane. Winds of 100 miles per hour needs to get to 111. Uh, pressure at 972 millibars. It's moving north northwest at 13 miles per hour. And now it's 155 miles southeast of the western tip of Cuba. So it's on its way. Here's that forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center. And notice nothing changes for us. We're still outside the cone. It's still forecast to be a category four once it makes that nearest approach to us moving over the southeastern Gulf of Mexico and then making its way up toward the Tampa Bay area and slowing down as it apparently heads for a landfall moving from Wednesday into Thursday does not look like a great scenario for them. But I just want to review uh, really the impacts we're expecting here have not changed. Heavy rainfall that could lead to flooding. Wind gusts, there is a tropical storm warning for the lower keys, so winds down there may gust up to 60 miles per hour. We're talking Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then, of course, in some of the rain bands, we won't rule out isolated tornadoes for our area. But let's chat with our hurricane specialist, Michael Lowry. Michael, if I were in Tampa right now and looking at that forecast cone and knowing that the system is expected to slow down like that, I, I would leave as fast as I could. It's very worrisome. Yeah, I would as well. Uh, this is a big storm surge threat for the west coast of Florida. Let's talk about storm surge. It's the rise in water or the push of the ocean water above normally uh, dry land. Two to four feet is what's being forecast down here in the Keys. Now, as we go up uh, to uh, parts of Tampa area, we're talking about up to 10 feet of storm surge possible. This is above land, so if you're standing uh, at the coastline there, and I'm six feet tall, that's four feet above where I stand. So these are some big numbers with a Category 3 hurricane coming ashore. It's been a long time since we've seen that intensity, that strength of a hurricane threaten Tampa directly head on like this one. We've had some that's come close. We've had Irma in 2017. Uh, we had uh, Charlie to the south there in 2004, but nothing that has uh, come this far to the north and close to Tampa. In terms of what causes the storm surge threat, it's generally the strength of the storm, obviously, the breadth of the winds, the larger the wind field, and that's we expecting that to expand as it gets closer. Closer, A slower storm is going to pr produce more storm surge, but also the shallow ocean floor right off the coast here, about 150 miles off coast. Waters are only about 100 and... Um, 100, 200 feet deep, so pretty shallow water here for the storm surge to build up on. Take a look at the visible satellite picture. This storm is getting much better organized. We see it coiling up like a snake tonight on our visible satellite picture. The forecast for this to strengthen very, very quickly overnight as it gets into the southern Gulf of Mexico. We are starting to narrow the threat in terms of where this is going to directly impact. As Betty said, we're going to get some periphery impacts. We're going to see the heavy rains, all that moisture that's coming up this way. That's going to be our big concern with some storm surge down in the Keys. Now you can follow here what's going to happen. We have a, a dip in the jet stream that is going to pick this one up and bring it very close to the coast. There is some um, spread in the models as we get into late week. Some of them are taking it a little bit more toward the Big Bend, some of them closer to Tampa. It really sort of depends, first of all, how strong this system is. Stronger system is going to get pick up, picked up more quickly, brought to the northeast. A weaker system would tend to go more to the west. But either way, it's going to be a large system, and the big wind field, very slow moving, is going to be a big problem for the water threat here at the coast. So this is a big story for this week. Thankfully for us, at least, it has moved away, but we're going to have to get through the next few days here with some potentially heavy rains. Louie and Nicole, back over to you. Well, video from West Bay Grand Cayman earlier today. You can see heavy rain battering a neighborhood there. The National Emergency Operations Center is advising residents to stay vigilant, stay indoors, and avoid the shoreline as Ian 
roars by. Let's take a live look now from Grand Cayman Island, courtesy of the Coral Stone Club on the famed Seven Mile Beach in Grand Cayman. You can see the palm trees there, but you can see the white caps, the waves from the water there just crushing the, crushing the sand. Remember, you can also download our Max Tracker app to get up to date information from our team of certified meteorologists. You can scan the QR code on your screen or search Max Tracker in your app store for the free download.